Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at a Linux distribution which I don't think I've ever actually used before. So this is the first time we're going to see it on the channel and that is Netrunner. So Netrunner is a Debian based distribution which as of their most recent version, which has just been released, is based on Debian 10.7. So it ships exclusively with the KDE Plasma desktop environment and features some of their own little fine tunings included out of the box. There's two versions we could have gone for, the desktop version, which is the standard version and ships with all of the software for everyday usage, and then a core version, which is a slimmed down version and allows you to build up your own system. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can just have a quick look at the recommended minimum system requirements. So, they recommend at a minimum, a CPU of 1.6 GHz Intel Atom, RAM of 1 GB, a hard drive size of 15 GB, and graphics card Intel GMA 945 or video memory of at least 128 MB. Now they do say that if you're going to be running it in a virtual box you're going to want to increase your RAM to 1.5 GB as opposed to the 1 GB here if you was running it natively. Now we are of course going to be checking it out natively in the full desktop version with an ISO size of 2.6 GB. So we're in the live environment right now and we're going to go ahead and install it onto the main computer here and take a look around. So it's using the Calamari's installer. Let's just change the language from American to British English and go to the next step. So we're not in New York, we're right about there, which is Europe, London. So it's already got English UK for the keyboard layout and everything appears to be working as it should. Okay, so here's where we're going to set up our disk partition. So what we're going to do is change our storage drive from the Sabrent to the Drevo X1 SSD. We're going to do the one in the middle here, which is the erase disk, and this is going to let the installer create the partition layout for us. Just go ahead and press that little button there. Interestingly, it doesn't let us manually configure how we want our swap, so we could have either had swap, swap with Hibernate, no swap, or swap to file, but instead it's created as a swap partition of 34.5 GB, which should be large enough for suspend to disk with full hibernation. So we'll check that out once we are fully installed. We then of course have our root partition using the ext4 file system and then a small partition for our EFI. Next, so here we go for our user accounts and we're just going to call it Netrunner and keep it super simple. So usually you'll also find another box down here for using the same password as the administrator account, however this only appears to have the option for logging in automatically. Next. Okay, so that's pretty simple. I think that's all we need to do. So we're going to press install and that's going to go ahead and start the installation and we'll be back once this has finished. Okay, so the installation has complete and that was done in around about five minutes. So what we're going to do now is reboot and check out our fresh installed Netrunner desktop with KDE. Okay, so here we are on our fully installed Netrunner desktop. So the versions of KDE Plasma it comes with is version 5.14.5 and the OpenGL driver it's using is Xorg and the kernel version it ships with is 5.9.0. Now before we start taking a look around, we are going to run a quick update in the terminal. However, it doesn't have the shortcut for Control alt t using console. However, I do see a little drop down terminal here, so we'll do it in here. So sudo apt update. Okay, so it has found that we've got 23 packages to upgrade and included in that is a newer kernel version of 5.10. So what I'm going to do is run the upgrade command, reboot, and then we'll come back to it once that's finished. Okay, so we're all up to date and should be good to go. Now we are of course running a newer kernel version of version 5.10. So what we're going to do now is just generally go over the desktop, see how everything's set up and have a little look around. Now straight off the bat, I actually quite like how nice and clean this KDE setup is out of the box. It's a single panel layout with your panel at the bottom and starting from the right we have our little edit panel button where you can change your screen, edge, height, add widgets and all of that good stuff. The actual size of the panel is a little high for me, but we'll leave it like that for now. We then have our notification center, which of course we can clear all notifications while clearing the history. We then have our clock, and then just to the left of that, we have the button to then expand to our status and notifications. Now, as we're using an older version of KDE and not anything post 5.20, we're gonna be using the older list kind of view as opposed to the grid that comes in the newer versions. We then have our volume icon and a cool little icon here which is going to be for screenshotting. So it's clicking that once, we'll then open up Spectacle which is the default screenshot tool for KDE. Take a full screen screenshot and then you can just press save and that will save it straight to your pictures folder. And then to the left of that we have our little drop down terminal. Now what's cool about these little drop down terminals is that anything you run in here will stay running in the background. So for example, if we were to go ahead and install let's say HTOP. 
and then press that button it will still continue running that command in the background and the same as if we actually run htop as the command and then hide it and then reopen it again it will still be there running where you left it now usually the default shortcut key to expose this instead of using the mouse is f12 so let's give that a go there we go so you can use the button f12 to expose it and hide it or of course you can just come down here and click it as well we then have a bit of empty space which is where your applications are going to be sort of populated when you open things and i do believe it uses the older version and not the icons only task list so for example let's say we was going to open up firefox using the quick launch icon here as you can see it's opened it up in the full sort of view there with the bar as well as the icon and the name of the window now while we're in firefox it's got a few little customizations and tweaks included out of the box and one of them being the inclusion of an extension for ad blocking so we've got ublick origin installed out of the box now this is firefox extended support release if i do believe so if we go into help and about we can just quickly check the version so as you can see it's using the extended support release or esr version 78.7 very nice now we also have a little quick launch for our dolphin let's quickly open up dolphin and see how that looks on here it's got a nice little default view and there's all of your folders and you've got the little sort of thumbnail preview to the right we then have at the very left our application launcher now i'm not a huge fan of where they've gone with this i don't quite like the full screen application dashboards and that's not just kde specific i don't like full screen application launches on any desktop operating system i'm just not too sure it makes a whole lot of sense when you're using a mouse and keyboard however we have our favorites to the left here so you can favorite your applications and then you can open them very quickly from the left panel we then have our logout reboot shutdown buttons and this view will be the main view of applications so at the moment we're on recent applications if we go down one category and then go down again it will then populate that with the category in the middle of the screen of all of those applications and of course we had we can just of course search by typing in firefox hitting enter and then launching applications like that and that is bound to your left super key we can also manage the widgets all from within the application dashboard so it's got quite a lot of utility and features this kind of application launcher i just don't like something that sort of takes captive of my whole screen when you don't really need it to so instead of using that we are going to quickly use an alternative so we're going to right click go to alternatives and see what we've got out of the box so we have the application dashboard the application launcher the application menu and then we have the simple menu i'm going to go for the very standard application launcher like so and then that should be more used more sort of what i'm used to when i'm using the kde desktop environment so now that we've got that open we're very quickly going to run through the applications and see what we've got installed out of the box bearing in mind this is the full fat desktop version and not the core version so starting in games we have in the arcade category we have burger space which is a hamburger smashing video game we have k snake jewel k breakout and frozen bubble then in board games we have chess k mahjong and sudoku or nudoku <laughs> then in board games we we just done board games then in tactics and strategy we have k mines which is a mind sweeper like game and then we have 3d light cycle game and it comes installed with steam out of the box as well now in graphics we have critter gimp scan like when view and inkscape and in internet we have uh, q transmission so we're using transmission for our torrent files pigeon which is a multi-protocol chat client so if you've got accounts in all different chat services and you're often losing track of it you can have that all within one window and talk with everyone from the one place there using pigeon very handy application so for your desktop email client you're going to be using thunderbird and it comes installed with skype kde marble and of course firefox esr as your default email uh, web client uh, web browser now in multimedia we have an audio player called yarok so i've never used this before let's have a quick look at how this interface looks hmm interesting so we've got sort of a home context dashboard here we have our music artists album tracks and genre so it's got a few sort of web options here so we've got tune in radionomy dr dribble and favorite stream uh, sort of a location for home and root directory and you can jump into your settings like that so i've never used that before but it looks fairly interesting let's keep moving so what else have we got in multimedia we then have a g music browser sm player for media files and we will test out some media tests in just a moment once we've got through all of the applications we then also have handbrake which is for transcoding media 
Audacious Music Player, and then we have pre-installed Caden Live, the video editor, which makes my life a whole lot easier, as that's the editor I'm going to use for this video. We then have Pulse Audio Volume Control and Cheese for Webcam. Next up in Office, we have the full LibreOffice suite. Now, as we're going to be based on Debian, it's going to be using an older version of LibreOffice, probably 6.1 point something. 6.1.5.2 so you can of course use a newer version if you like from the seven series of releases do we have dictionary support out of the box we don't so if you wanted automatic spell checking to properly work you're going to want to go ahead and download the dictionary for your language so for me it would be en for all of the english languages and then automatic spell checking will work as you would expect it to so that's everything in office now in settings we have so it comes with Cavantum for theming which we'll check out in just a moment Oh nice, so it comes pre-installed with the App Image Launcher. So for those of you who have used App Images before but you don't quite like manually integrating it with your system, this application would do all of that for you and do all the heavy lifting and move the icon files where it needs to go for this to appear in Application Launcher. But we'll check out how that works in a moment as well. We then have the Grub Customizer, the X11 VNC server, and then of course your KDE system settings. Now, we will spend a bit of time on this in a moment because they've done a few tweaks here. So for example, in Workspace Appearance, all of your kind of theming settings are all gonna be within this one section. So for example, we have Look and Feel, Desktop Themes, Desktop Effects, or Widget Style, Decoration, Splash, discard and if you go all the way to the bottom here we have the gnome application style for gtk so i don't think this comes with like csd or anything like that so instead it's going to use this to make it look a lot more at home on a kde desktop when you're using gtk applications so that's a nice inclusion out of the box anything else in the settings that i want to check out no so in utilities now we have kate for text editing arc for your archiving tool Ocular, KCalc, Voco screen, which is a very small and simple to use video sort of screen recorder. So you can change the format from MKV, MP4 and GIF. And of course you can add your webcam sources and all of that good stuff. So anything else in multimedia, uh, not multimedia, utilities. No, we do also have the SUSE Studio Image Writer as well. Okay. So I think we're getting close to the end of these applications. So that was utilities. Now web, I believe these are all web-based applications. So for example, we have a web app for opendesktop.org, Skype web, Telegram, the web interface, HookTube. So view YouTube videos without giving them views. Interesting, I'm not too sure. I don't know, I probably wouldn't use that myself to be honest. And then we have the WhatsApp web client if you're someone who uses WhatsApp. So of course you can sort of sync it with your phone and then you can have your messaging on your browser here doesn't quite feel like a web application it more just appears to be opening it up in a sort of a window there but nevertheless let's keep moving so i think that's all of the applications it is indeed so we noticed that we've got the app image launcher so let's go back into uh, so we've got i'm sure that i saw synaptic somewhere as well hold on have we missed a section i think we might have no, I think that's everything. Let me just type in Synaptic. Yeah, we do. So we have the Synaptic Package Manager and we also have KDE Connect for syncing your Android phone wirelessly, showing notifications, doing remote commands and all of that good stuff. And it also comes pre-installed with Discover, the Plasma Discover Store. So you can manage your applications using Synaptic, which is a bit more, gives you a bit more sort of control and you can sort of look for things a bit nicer and have some more manual sort of control over your package installations as opposed to something that's quite sort of graphical user interface -y like Discover. So Discover is quite good for just sort of looking at things, whereas Synaptic I find is better for sort of doing batch installations of multiple packages. So we know that we've got the App Image Launcher installed out of the box. Do we have anything for Snap or Flatpak? So we're going to do a Snap list. So we don't have Snap D installed out of the box. And do we have Flatpak in out of the box? We don't, so I'm actually quite impressed by that. So a lot of distributions kind of disregard app images and always usually either go for SnapD or Flatpak, apart from distributions like Nitrux, very much focuses on app images. It's nice to see that this has the app image launcher installed out of the box as well. So now that we've gone through that, I'm gonna quickly show you how the app image launcher will work. So we're gonna open up our web browser and we're gonna think of a nice small app image to download. So what's small and has an app image? Etcher. So we're going to type an Etcher app image 
and we're going to go right about there and then scroll down to the releases with the download button and then we're going to download the etcher app image and let app image launcher integrate it with our system so we want the 64 one right about there interesting so it's not giving us the option to open it straight from the web browser with app image launcher so we're going to save the file into our downloads folder and then we're just going to double click on it from the file manager of course is dolphin okay so what's going to happen is we're going to double click this and it's going to open up the app image launcher and it's going to ask us if we want to integrate it with our system there we go so this little helper is designed to improve your app image experience on your computer it appears you have never run app image launcher before please take a minute and configure your preferences for the most part these defaults will be absolutely fine so what it's going to do is make a folder in your home folder for your user and call it applications copy all of the app images there and also create a dot desktop file in local share applications which will integrate within your application launcher so we're going to press ok now it's going to give you the option to either run once and not integrate it or integrate and run so we're going to integrate it and run so it's moved that file now and that file was just open for us so it's going to feel like any other application would if you use a native application or a flat pack or a snap application and if you go into your home folder now we have a new folder called applications and that is where all of the executables are going to reside now go back into your home folder show your hidden files go to dot local share and applications and there is going to be the dot desktop files for those applications now if everything's gone to plan we should just be able to search for etcher and there it is so it hasn't found the icon for it but it doesn't always do that so you might have a bit less luck with certain applications however 95 percent of applications will have their icon loaded absolutely fine using app image launcher however you can of course open this and make any changes you might want for example if it's in a category you don't quite like it to be in you can change the category from utility to anything else that you might think it's better suited for as well as the icon theming there now that we've done that we're going to do a quick reboot and see how much ram this uses from refresh boot and then we'll check out the system settings and have a little play around with some of the other applications okay so we are back and ram wise it's using 860 865 mb on a fresh boot which isn't the lightest ever However, they do offer the core version for you to build your system around it. And I'm going to imagine your RAM could be quite a bit lower than what we can see there. And of course, we have the nice large swap partition, which we will test for hibernation somewhere towards the end of the video. Now, what we're going to do is do a very simple media playback test to see if that's all working out of the box. So I've plugged in an external SSD, which is formatted in the XFAT file system, and it's mounted that without any problems whatsoever. What we're going to do is open up Jing.mp4, which is a video I done on Jing OS a little while ago. And as you can see, it's got the nice little thumbnail view for it. And we even have, it appears that we can do a little preview. We can indeed, so that's very nice. What I'm going to do is just mute it though, so I don't need to hear the volume back. And we're just going to double click on there, and it should open it up in SM Player. And there we go so all of the media playback so far is working absolutely fine now what we're going to do is open up scarlet fire because i'm interested to see what the default music player is whether it's that one that i didn't know or audacious or something like that so let's just open that up and that's defaulted to open up in audacious and i just want to see what it looks like playing in the other music player which was called yarok there we go so here we go can i just drag and drop a file like so there we go and that's what it looks like when you're playing a music back using the yarok player and of course you can do little ratings and make playlists and all of that good stuff i might spend a bit more time on this music player at a later date and see how it all works it appears to have scrobbler support for last fm as well which is something i always look for in a music player because i'm still one of those people that has a last fm account from years past okay cool so so far media playback has worked absolutely fine out of the box and i do very much like the inclusion of the file previews in the right pane there using the dolphin file manager now we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the system settings so we're going to open up system settings here right so we're going to start in the workspace appearance so out of the box it does come installed with a few extra themes as aside from just breeze and breeze dark we have netrunner indigo as the default netrunner desktop and netrunner black now in icons we have obsidian breeze breeze dark oxygen nomad water and the icon theme it's using by default is the breeze icon pack which is the default theme for plasma now let's switch over to a different desktop and see what some of these other themes look like 
So let's just open up our file manager. So we've got a nice light theme there. Now let's test it out of a different theme. So let's go for Netrunner Black. Apply. Okay, so it's a darker theme and it's changed the icon theme to Obsidian. And I think you might want to go into Cavantum and see if there's an actual matching theme in Cavantum for this theme. So if we go into change and delete theme, we are currently using KV Indigo 2, which is for this one right here. However, they do have themes for Cavantum, Net Black, and a lot of other stuff, so you can probably make it match a bit nicer. We aren't going to change that for now, though, because we are going to go back to Indigo in just a moment after we've checked out Netrunner Desktop. So let's press apply. So it's another light kind of theme, but we've got sort of the title bars as a blue color, dark panel at the bottom there, and in the dark application launcher. And I'm going to imagine there's also a matching Cavantum theme for that. So let's switch back to Netrunner Indigo now. And actually, I do quite like the color scheme here. So it's sort of a shade of blue almost, and it's got quite a nice light theme. I wouldn't mind an out and out just dark version of this theme with all of the same colors, but the windows were just more of a darker color. But other than that, I think the theming is quite nice. So of course in the desktop themes as well, we have all of the stuff for the desktop. So Black X, Blue X, Breeze Alpha, and all of that good stuff. Now we are just gonna very quickly run through some of the desktop effects, because I don't know if you've noticed, but when we minimize, it's using the magic lamp. So what that means is if we go to alternatives for a quick moment and go to the icon only task manager. So if you've used Mac OS before, I think they call it Genie, which is basically it's gonna sort of go into the icon that it's sort of minimizing into kind of like a genie or a magic lamp so what we're going to do is minimize and as you can see it's sort of gone straight into that icon like a magic lamp or a genie effect so we also have a zoom in, uh, enabled background contrast blur desaturate unresponsive applications fade log out morphing pop-ups screen edges so we've got some screen edges do we Let's have a look. Do we have any screen? We do. So it appears that we have a show desktop or minimize all application screen edge on the bottom right. I don't like screen edges or hot corners. However, I don't think that's one you're going to quite often accidentally trigger yourself. So I don't think that's too egregious, to be honest with you. Okay, what else have we got? We have magic lamp, which is what I was talking about when you minimize the application. We have dialog box parent slide so when you're switching virtual desktops it's going to use the default slide animation so what we're going to do is jump into virtual desktops and quickly create some because i don't think we have any by default no so i don't much like to use rows instead i just use one row with four desktops so for example what we're going to do is add four desktops like so go to apply so the shortcut could not set shortcut control f4 for desktop 4 let's have a look there we go. It appears that it is working with Control F4 though, so I'm not sure what that conflict was about. But as you can see, it's using a very nice and smooth slide animation. <clears throat> okay, so that's pretty much everything with the desktop of X. Windows widget style, it's going to be using the Cavantum and you can change it up with fine tuning and all of that good stuff. And we have a few other different decorations for our title bars and Windows applications. Splash screen just discard that I don't want to change anything so we'll show the splash screen in a moment actually which is the Netrunner Indigo and it has different ones for the desktop and black as well as breeze now the cursor I don't like this cursor so I am just going to change it to the standard breeze cursor but the cursor it's using is called red modern and it also has white classica windows obsidian obsidian doesn't look too bad actually DMZ breeze snow and breeze but we're just going to switch it over to breeze and call it a day Okay, so now I've looked at most of what I want to look at for my first look at Netrunner with the KDE desktop environment. We're just going to finish up by testing that Hibernation is working out of the box. So we've opened up Caden Live. We're going to summon Hibernate with the GUI. And as long as everything works, once it goes into a low powered state and resumes, Caden Live will still be on the screen. So we're going to go into Replication Launcher, go to Leave, and if this doesn't work, we'll summon it via the terminal and see if that has any other effect. It says resuming from hibernation, so that's a good sign that everything's gone to plan. So we should see the lock screen before we see the desktop, and there we go. So we should be able to log in, and Caden Live should still be right where we left it. And it is perfect. So everything's working out of the box from what I've taken a look at so far. And I think that's going to conclude my first look at Netrunner. All in all though, I've actually quite enjoyed it. I like the minor little tweaks here and there they've made to the KDE desktop. And although it's quite an old version of KDE now at 5.14, 
the changes they've made does make it feel a bit more modern and more in line with the versions you get post 5.20 i will leave a link in the description if you'd like to try this out yourself thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and also join the discord there's a link in the description i'll see you on the next one bye bye